Ruchem Aboim, again, welcome everyone. Welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. Um, so this, this, this tonight on the uh, my lecture of uh, the my thoughts. Um, the lecture is called the mountain. This week on my thoughts, I'd like to discuss how we approach our challenges in life. Do we perceive them as mountains or do we perceive them as hills? Judaism is connected with mountains. Abram Rabino, Abraham our father, brought up his son Yitzhak as a sacrifice on Hara Maria, the Temple Mount. Yaakov Avinu, Jacob our father, slept on the Temple Mount, where he had a dream of the ladder going up to heaven. Again, this was the first time that he was privy to a private audience with God Almighty himself. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses our teacher, first encountered God Almighty on a mountain. It was there that he saw the burning bush. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they traveled to Mount Sinai, where they received the Torah from God Almighty. Then when the children of Israel first entered the land of Canaan, under the leadership of Yoshua, Joshua, their first stop were to the mountains of har Avon and har Grizim. It was there that they accepted upon themselves the concept of a rebut, meaning mutual responsibility. In addition, both the holy temples were, considered, were constructed on Mount Moriah, referred to as the Temple Mount. Each of these mountains represented different challenges that the children of Israel would face in their history. You know, there can be no doubt <clears throat> that we all face certain challenges in life, many that are formidable. Some that present themselves quickly and unannounced, such as an accident. Others that we may experience daily, such as a long-term illness. And then there are the conditions that we are born with. These, may have been, these we may have to contend with for all of our lives, such as OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, disorder or ADHD, Attention Deficit, Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Autism, Mental Health, just to name a few. I believe our perception plays a big part in how we face our challenges. You know, if you assume that everything is always going to run perfectly, <laughs> well, then you have, are in for a rude awakening. I always say that when I get up in the mor each morning, I know that I have a problem. Once I find it, the rest of the day is just fine. You know, life can be viewed as a sort of battlefield. Once you locate your target, then you can set your sights and fire. Not all battles end quickly or decisively. You know, life is not a, a neat little package. More often, more often than not, one shot will not eliminate the problem. It may take many assaults, and even then, the problem may still not be totally eradicated. There are some problems that we have the ability to remove completely, but then there are others that we must learn to live with. You know, I, what I call, I call them lion tamers. You know, even the lions that you see in a circus are still wild and dangerous animals. The lion trainer puts on a show making the lions do all types of tricks in the ring. However, he must respect the fact that they are still lions. And if the trainer comes too close, well, the lion will still attack. Though the lions may appear to be under control, the trainer must always remember that they are still dangerous wild animals and that they, that they can return to their true wild nature if he gets too close. Now, you know, the same warning can be connected to our challenges in life. Though we may feel that we have all of our addictions under control, we must always remember that our addictions are like a lion. If we get too close, we can suffer a relapse. This is similar to those who have to battle with the challenge of alcoholism. No matter how long it has been since an alcoholic has had a drink, they will still refer to themselves as an alcoholic. They realize that they are just one drink away from succumbing to their addiction. King David, David Amalek, wrote in Psalm 121, Shir Hamalos, a song of ascent. Esa Eina El Hahorim, I lift my eyes up to the mountains, and I ask, may I and Yobo Ezri, from where will my salvation come? Facing up to our daily challenges in life can be daunting. You know, many times we view our challenges as insurmountable mountains, we want to give up even before we've begun. We need to discover 
a source of strength in order to be able to begin our climb up the mountain. Verse 2 continues, Ezri me'em Hashem ose shemayim va'aretz. Let my help come from God, who shapes heaven and earth. It is only by connecting to the source of all strength, God our Father in heaven, that we even have the possibility to succeed in our lifelong struggles. You know, the psalm ends with the words, Hashem yishmor tzeisecha uvoecha me'ato v'yad olam. May God protect your going out and your homecoming from this time forth and for all the future. If we choose to climb the mountain of life alone, the odds of our succeeding are slim, if not impossible. However, when we climb the mountain with the assistance of God Almighty, well, then he serves as our safety rope. He allows us at least the possibility of succeeding in our challenges. When we place our faith in God Almighty, it allows us to develop a belief in ourselves, self-confidence. There is a saying that goes, if you believe that you're going to lose, well, you have already lost. Nowhere in the Torah does it say that serving God is a walk in the park. It entails walking up a mountain. Now, some of the paths are more difficult than others. The terrain is constantly changing, as is the weather. These represent our attitudes towards our journey. However, we have the Torah as a sort of map, and a, a GPS, a God-positioning satellite, a godly soul, that we, can, that we can follow. They will help us to navigate the challenges that the mountain presents. You know, at times the path may seem simple, posing very little difficulty, but we should not be lulled to sleep. We need to stay awake since the terrain can change instantly, more often than not, before we realize that we have drifted off the proper path. This compels us to examine our thoughts and actions, and when we do, we will find that we have somehow lost contact with God and His Torah. When we follow His direction, we can never lose our way. We should also be aware that our addictions will try different strategies to convince us that climbing part of the mountain is enough. After all, who's perfect? We look behind us and we see many people that are still at the bottom of the mountain. And so we build our castle on the first or second plateau that we reach. We forget about climbing to the top. We have been outmaneuvered by our challenges. We may have won many battles, but in the end, we have lost the war. Life wasn't meant to be simple. We read in the Torah about the story of Yosef, Joseph. Somehow his situation continued to go from bad to worse. First he was sold as a slave by his brothers. Then when he thought that things couldn't get any worse, he was wrongly accused of raping his master's wife. As if slavery wasn't bad enough, he was now a prisoner in a dungeon. However, through all of his trials and tribulations, we never read, not once, that Yosef complained. Strange. You know, one would have thought that he should have had some complaint to God for all the difficulties that he was forced unjustly to endure. Somehow he saw the hand of God in everything that he experienced. What was even more amazing was that other people saw and realized that he was always connected to God Almighty. Even in the worst of scenarios, it was obvious to everyone that God was always by his side. Yosef climbed the mountain. He never stopped climbing. He understood. No pain, no gain. Many people want to be successful, but they don't want to put in the hard work necessary to achieve the goal. There's another saying that says, God helps those that help themselves. I'm certain that Yosef never forgot all that he was forced to endure before he miraculously became the viceroy of Egypt, the second most powerful man in the world. He had concluded <clears throat> that everything in life is directed by God Almighty. You know, people can attempt to accomplish many different things in life, but without Siata Deshmaya, without the help of heaven, success is impossible. You see, success is God's domain. What we supply is the effort. Without the effort, we have little to no chance of ever succeeding. We witness that wherever and whenever 
wherever he, he was, he always display, displayed a strong work ethic. When he was a slave, he became the head of his master's household. When he was incarcerated in prison within a short time, he was put in charge of all the prisoners. And even when he became the viceroy of Egypt, we read that he personally oversaw all the distribution of the provisions that had been stored in Egypt during the years of plenty. Serving God, as I mentioned, is not a walk in the park. It entails work. I believe that for the most part, all people are going to heaven. That being the case, well, then why bother exerting yourself? Your Father in heaven will take you to the top of the mountain even if you don't break a sweat. Now, you know, that may be true, but the real question in life is, are you climbing the mountain to paradise or are you taking a helicopter? When you reach the top, there can be no comparison between the climbers and the riders. I believe that hell is realizing that taking the helicopter was a big mistake. You should have climbed. There is nothing that God Almighty orchestrates in our lives that is not for our benefit. Yes, there are challenges in life, <clears throat> but when you succeed at these challenges, the joy and satisfaction that you reap are more than worth all the effort that you expended. The greatest of people accept their challenges. They don't look for easy ways out. There's a story told about Yitzhak Perlman. He's an Israeli-American violinist known for his brilliant virtuoso technique. He is regarded as one of the finest performers of the violin repertoire of his time. He contracted polio as a young man, which left him crippled for life. He was playing a concert at Carnegie Hall. As the performance began, suddenly there was a loud twang that echoed throughout the hall. One of the strings of Yitzchak Perlman's violin had snapped. There was a pause. The conductor turned to him and he motioned for the conductor to continue the performance without putting a new string on his violin. He played the whole concert with only three strings. After the concert was, was finished, he was greeted with a loud, long, and uproarious applause. The audience realized that they had been treated to an amazing performance. Now, not just the quality of the music, but all done with the handicap of only three strings. After the audience died down, pardon me, after the applause died down, Mr. Perlman addressed the audience. He said, you know, I could have stopped and put on a new string, but I wanted to make a point that in life, we sometimes have to make the most out of what we have, not what we want. God Almighty has created us all with our unique challenges, mountains that he expects us to climb. Life was meant to be lived. I think that God created us all with our own personal challenges so that we can enjoy our lives with an even greater sense of accomplishment. Life is about making ourselves the best that we can be. Climbing the mountain of life helps us to realize how much we can accomplish in life if we just continue to climb and never give up. It's never too late. Look at Abram Avinu, Abraham, our father, who began his journey at the age of 75, or Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, who began his life mission when he was 80 years old. It's interesting that when we reach the other side of the mountain, we many times come to the realization that the mountain that we have just climbed was in reality only a hill. Let us hope and pray that we are fortunate enough that we will be able to climb the mountain that leads us to the third holy temple with the coming of Mashiach Sukainu quickly in our time. May God bless us again to end the war in Gaza, to bring home the hostages, to heal the injured, to comfort the mourners, and to bring back our brave Israeli soldiers, all of them healthy and alive with the coming of Mashiach Sukainu. Again, thank you very much for listening and attending. Uh, please, again, if you can, if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe, push the share and the like button. That would help us a bit. And again, I want to thank you again for, for attending. There will be a musical rendition after this shortly. And uh, again, thank you for attending. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.